On this episode of Content Sessions, we talk getting on Google and creating content for your new mortgage brokerage. Welcome to another episode of Content Sessions. I'm with Carolina Horta. I keep wanting to say Carolina. Say Carolina. Carolina. A lot of people say Carolina. Say Carolina. (laughs) That's okay. Um, And you're with Dominion Lending. Yes. Uh, So tell us a little bit about that. So I just opened up my own mortgage brokerage with Dominion Lending. And uh, I'm very excited mm. and I'm a little nervous at the same time because I've been hiding in the back office doing underwriting. So I think after seven years, I'm ready to get out there. Nice. And were you an underwriter with the same company? Well, it was sent him way to save, which okay. is a brokerage owned by my family, my father. Ah, yeah. Got it. Um, and so I don't know a lot about the mortgage industry. So were you... Was there any affiliation with so Dominion's like the brand of yeah? So basically, it's a franchise just Mm. like Remax Century 21. It's a known um, franchise for mortgages, mortgage industry, and we have lots of mortgage agents. And uh, when Dominion Lending is looking for mortgage brokerages to join them, they look for the best, making sure they have a good reputation and mortgage brokers know what they're doing. Got it, got it. And so you've been in kind of in a bunch of different areas within the space. Yes, that's yeah. correct. So before I became a mortgage agent, I was uh, a receptionist, law clerk at real estate firm Century 21 and Remax, and also uh, Go West Realty. And then I moved on to working at our lawyer's office and doing um, basically a clerk reception, learning everything I can about real estate. So then I was ready to become a mortgage agent because I kind of knew all aspects of the business. Mm. And then do you have to be an agent for a certain amount of time before you can... So basically you can be a mortgage agent for two years and Mm. then take the course to become a broker. But a lot of people stay as a agent because you usually get your license as a mortgage broker if you're going to one day own a brokerage got it so it's kind of like the planning you don't do it unless you're planning on going down the path yes okay very cool and um and so now is your family competition no no (laughs) no they want me to succeed and they want me to be independent and basically take over the business later yeah. on Got it. and I just want to be more independent a lot of people know me as uh, my dad's daughter yeah, yeah but I'm at this point in my life that I'm ready to network and let people basically know what I'm doing cool and then so structurally so you own the brokerage and then you you're going to bring in agents to kind of that work is cor- underneath you? that yeah. is correct I just hired two new brand new agents and I got two uh, agents joining me from Centum to uh, DLC NASA Casa. Got it. And then the way that you were underwriting policy before, do you have someone like that here or is that done? So basically I was the underwriter for all the deals, checking compliance, collecting documents, and then telling agents that needed help or working for other agents, Mm -hmm. I'm going to submit the deal there. This is the best fit for the client and basically meeting with clients, uh, signing the commitment and explaining all the terms. Cool. And so then the agents that you bring in will kind of, I guess they deal with that. So new agents Mm -hmm. that are coming into the industry, they're going to need a lot of training. So just what I've been doing for seven years, training, learning from each deal, each deal is different. And uh, that's what I'm going to be doing, training new agents. Cool. And we talked a little bit beforehand about you kind of have a a niche or like a specific kind of audience that you're looking to service. Yes. In my industry right now, um, the big focus that I'm going to, what I want my niche to be is self-employed. A lot of people who are self-employed are having a very hard time getting a mortgage. <laughs> this guy. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's great. It's really rewarding because mm. they go to banks and they don't get a mortgage. And they yeah. come to me, we work a plan, and they leave here very happy thinking, you know, we should have came to you first. Like the process was really easy and I'm so happy to um, get a mortgage. And that's where I get my referrals from is clients. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, most of the businesses that we interact with that we talk to their biggest base is always the you know word of mouth referral base those are always going to be your best yes. customers yes. and i think so can you i guess when people are re-signing their mortgage once they can kind of now come over to you even though they were with you somewhere else or how uh, so basically 
you know, first time home buyers, if they're self employed, mm. they usually it takes up to three, four months to get approved, get your all your documents in order. And then we do a, a pre approval and then they're stress free because they know how much they could afford. They yeah. know that they could actually shop for now. Right. And get that um, mortgage. Right. But the people that you've done mortgages for in the past, yes. could they then come over to you on when the next? Of course. Yeah. I love okay. it. I love when I have um, clients coming second time, third mm. time, um, referring them to their friends and then yeah. coming to me. It's, it's it's great. It's what I want. Yeah. I want them to only think of me when it comes to mortgages or any sure. financial advice. Awesome. And so, you know, obviously that's going to be a good base of people for you to communicate with yes. and those referrals. Yeah. Um, but then we're talking, we were talking a little before about... Now I got to get more people. We got to yes. fill a lot more people's yes. time. So just take me through uh, from the agent perspective. So as the owner of a brokerage, mm-hmm. are, your kind of thought is I just want to bring attention into the brand that will give people things to do. Are are the agents responsible for trying to bring on their own stuff as well? How does that like? I know with real estate, like you've kind of got some marketing support at the top level, yes. but you're kind of responsible for your own. Well, we're all self employed. We it. Okay. have to get our own clients. So. Basically, you have to network. You have to get out there to get your clients. Yeah. And that's where, for me, it's an issue because I've been hiding in the back office doing underwriting. And it's right. like, for me, it's new coming out to social media and talking about, hey, this is what I do. I'm a mortgage yeah. broker. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And so uh, there's a couple topics we wanted to touch on. Google's search Yes. Um, was the first thing. So um, kind of the background there where you were saying that you're father's brokerage is showing up yeah yeah yeah. and yours is not yet yeah i just want to know how how do i promote myself how do i get to be on the google search so when you do google my name or i need a mortgage in mississauga i would like to know like how do i sure get the process started so fundamentally there's two things that you can do okay number one is your you can show up organically in a search Mm -hmm. so when you look at a google search typically there's some paid ads at the top Mm -hmm. and then there's usually a map and then there's usually other links below that. So the two ways you can get on Google are you can get there organically. So that's in the map and then in the the listings kind of partway through the page. And those are like, so what you do for that is called search engine optimization. You're trying to optimize your website so that Google's like, Oh, this is a, this, keyword matches what your website says and we're going to make you there on the page because we feel like you're a good option um the biggest thing with google is they want the people that are searching to continue coming back there to search Mm -hmm. now google unlike some of the social stuff they don't have as the competition is not as fierce right now people aren't just going to leave to go to bing but google's premise is still based on the amount of use that it has is directly related to their revenue right because they sell ads so for them what they measure is if somebody comes to your website and they spend a whole bunch of time there and they click around that's a good interaction according to what google says right if someone comes to your website and leaves right away then google's saying well maybe this wasn't the right thing and so you kind of you kind of have to match the the copy on your website to match up with what google thinks what keywords you want to show up under. Okay. So if you want to show up under mortgage broker Mississauga or mortgage yeah. broker in Streetsville or whatever different variation of that, what you'd want to do is you want to put some information on your website that Google can read that says that you, the fact that you are a mortgage broker in Streetsville. Okay. So your, your, the copy on your website will want to match what those keywords are. Now you can't just repeat the words over and over and over and over again because it won't. It loses its kind of power. Um, But one challenge with your industry is that there's a lot of mortgage brokers. Same thing with real estate, same thing with a lot. So the question always becomes, you know, you can implement some content on your website, but is that going to be enough for you to actually get ahead of somebody else on the page? And so there's two kind of factors that Google looks at to determine who's going to show up. Number one is going to be against you. Number one is going to be the authority of the domains how long has it been around yeah. how much traffic has it had how, what's its historical you know so because you're starting with a brand new website you start a little bit behind because you're saying well i don't have i haven't been around so i don't have the authority on the page um and then the second part is 
what is the content on the website. So what I mean by that is, so on each page on your website, you're gonna have a title and then you're gonna have copy, right? So the titles of your page should all be very closely tied to the keywords that you wanna show up for. Okay. And you kinda of have to balance it though, right? You can't just write mortgage broker in Streetsville because a consumer looking at the page they're reading it. They're like, "Yeah, I know you are." You can't just you can't just have content that's like super keyword focused. Or consumers that are reading it are going to say, "This isn't doesn't even make sense," right? Because Google's ideal is reading those really, really, really simplified things: mortgage broker in Streetsville, mortgage broker in Streetsville. Those variations. Yeah. That's all Google cares about. But what yeah. your customers need to see are who you guys are as a business and. Yeah. You know, so there's a fine line of like, how do you write that content to make it make sense? Um, I'll send you some, I'll send you some information about kind of like how um, you could, how you would be able to write some content that would help you rank. Okay. But I think to be perfectly honest, the process of doing that and optimizing your website, you should do it as a fundamental thing. But I don't think organically it's going to be that easy to get, especially for Mississauga. Yeah. Streetsville maybe because there's a finite amount of people. So the more niche you can get, the easier it is to get yourself up there. Yeah. So I would avoid things like, you know, real mortgage broker in Mississauga in terms of okay. copy because although it is true and you can yeah. have the fact that you're in Mississauga on the website, um there's going to be a bigger pool of people that are trying to get there because Mississauga is so wide. Mm -hmm. So anytime that you can niche it down into a neighborhood, so the more you have the word streetsville in your copy on the website that will help identify you as if someone's searching for streetsville it'll be easier for you to rank there okay. than trying to say like oh, i'm going to fight everybody in mississauga for a spot yeah does that make sense yeah um and so I, I think my takeaways for that would be keep it like keep your copy very niche and make sure that um the keywords that you want to show up for are displayed in the titles of your pages as well as the first 300 words on the page, okay, right? And so it, it can get a little counterintuitive because you don't just want to write, I'm a mortgage broker in streets. So it gets yeah. a little like, yeah, yeah I get it. Um, but you have to weigh the kind of technical writing with the more consumer-friendly writing. And it's, okay. it's an interesting process. But I think for you, keeping it to Streetsville for now to try and rank on that is probably your best bet because mm -hmm. Mississauga is, is going to be a really hard nut to crack. Um, and the other side of Google is the paid side. So on Google, they have a product called AdWords. And so you buy the, you buy, you bid on a phrase. So I want to bid on mortgage broker in street. Okay. So you tell the platform that, and what happens is you would bid on that. And wh whoever else wants to be up on the page would bid on that keyword okay. and the search, the time the search happens, Google actually runs a whole bunch of different algorithms to decide who's going to show up and where. And so the things that factor into that are like how much you're bidding, who else is bidding at the exact same time that you're bidding on it. So it's a really weird, um, it's an auction system, essentially. Google ads are an auction system. So if you say, I'm willing to spend $2 to be on the page, if somebody else is saying, I'm willing to spend $3, they might show up above you. Okay. But you set a bit, you set a budget for a day. So say it's 20 bucks a day or whatever it is. And so what happens is you bid. And you come up either, you know, one, two, three, four, or you come up lower, or you come up on page two or three or four. Now, as soon as you're off of page one, you kind of lose. No one's going to page two, right? Yeah. Especially if I'm looking for a mortgage broker, one of the first couple of results are going to be, if you think about the way that you shop, if I, yeah. it's something specific, like if I'm looking for a roofer, it's like one of those first four websites or the roofer I'm going to choose. Yeah. I'm not going to go past that. Yeah. Um, and so it's a, a you bid on it but what happens is if you show up on the page and someone doesn't come to your website you don't actually pay anything okay you only pay if they see your ad they click and they come to your website okay and the cost of that click that traffic to your website it depends on again the type time of day who's bidding and how much they're bidding so with google adwords the 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 challenge is always well i want to be near the top but is it worthwhile for me to always be at the top? Because if I have to pay four or five or six dollars to get someone to my website, you know, and there's a hundred searches every day, 
I'm not going to spend five or six hundred dollars a day on yeah. Google. So you kind of you kind of balance it by seeing, OK, I got 10 clicks from Google ads this week. And then you look at it on your website and say, well, what happened? Right. Did they leave right away? Did they stay on for a long enough period of time? Did they go to multiple pages? Like those are the kind of indicators to let you know if the people coming to you were good. Right. So if I'm uh, if I'm clicking on your ad and I come to the first page and I spend 15 seconds there, that's usually not a great indicator. Right. But if I click on your website and I see I you know, spend 20 seconds on the home page and I click to one of your resources or I click to the contact us page, then that's a really good indicator that that person was, you know, had some intent to contact you. And so what I recommend always with Google ads is like, I think the key, the niche keyword thing is still the right idea because bidding on Mississauga versus Streetsville, there's a lot of people trying to fight for the keyword of Mississauga. Yeah. So you might pay $6 for someone to click on Mississauga. You might pay $3 or $2 or $1 for Streetsville specifically. Okay. And so from a budgetary standpoint, it's like, especially when you're testing the waters, like it's intimidating the idea of spending 5 or $6 to get one person on my website. Like, yeah. how quickly am I going to run out of money, right? That's a conversation we have with people all the time. And I think it's, I think it's have a small budget, run it for a couple of weeks and see what those people are doing on the website. Because you got to remember, I haven't seen your site, but I think. Well, but hmm. with Dominion Lending, everybody has the same website. Oh, it's like a micro yeah. site. Yeah. So I think, you know, if you're driving people over there, um, taking a look at whatever those the analytics are to say, hey, did they spend a bit of time? You can actually even see, like, you can set up analytics in a way that says, like, yeah. did they click the call me button? Did they fill out a form? So and you that's can the thing, that like, too. how do I search that? That would be good to know. Yeah, how so... I look that up? Because for sure. I have no clue. <laughs> now, the only challenge you might run into is um, if it's going to a website that you don't have control over, like, is it Dominion's website and you have, like, a sub page? Um... Uh, well, I have my own. Mm. I bought uh, the name Carol Mortgage. Oh, great. And uh, if they search for, if a client is looking for a Mississauga agent, my uh, brokerage will come up. Right. And then they click on my name and then right away my website shows up. So they go from the Dominion, like it's almost like the, yeah. like they have like a reference page, yeah, but then it comes out to your personal site. Yes. Okay, great. Cause or that's where, someone could yeah. go personally on my website. Right. Great. So yeah, I would set up, um, so Google Analytics is the product. It's a free product. Okay. Um, and depending on how your website's built, like if it's like WordPress or Wix or Squarespace, okay. I'm not sure what platform it's built on, okay. but there'll be, um, there'll be a code that you get in Google Analytics. So okay, you sign up, you sign up for a free account and it says like, okay, what website are we going to drive your traffic to? You just fill in whatever the website is okay. and then you hit okay. It pops up a code. And that code goes into the top of your website. So the way a website works is um, it's got a header and the header goes across every page. And then the page content is different on every page, right? So the header is usually your navigation, your logo, right? Whatever is at the top. Mm -hmm. So you want to track what's happening on any page that people go. So the code goes into the header of the site and then whether they're on the you know, our services, about us, our contact, wherever they are on the yeah. site, it's tracking what page they go to and how long they spend on there. Okay. Um, depending on how where, how the website was built, if it was like a website builder, like a Wix or a Weebly or Squarespace, um, they usually just have a place where you can copy and paste the code right in. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. And from the time that you do that, it will automatically track. Um, it'll automatically track what pages people go to how long they stay on the website, you know, how many pages on average they go to when they mm -hmm. come on. So if I come on and I go to the home page, I start on the home page, I go to services, I go to contact, then that's three page views yeah. for the one user that came on. So it'll tell you the average amount of pages that people come on to. Mm -hmm. And having that data is important. I think the most important stuff as a beginner, like there's a lot of stuff analytics can tell you. It, you can go down a rabbit hole of parsing through information but i think the most important things for you would be um so people the amount of people that come the amount of time that they spend 
and the amount of pages on average that they go to. Because that's a really good, those three metrics are really good starting indicators. Um, you know, if I just come to the homepage and then I leave, it could still be okay. It could just because I just wanted your phone number and I called you and that was the end of it, right? Yeah. So it's not, the, it's not a terrible thing. But I think, you know, especially if you're going to be putting out content that's going to help self-employed people you're going to provide some resources and some tools for them i imagine on there yeah we also have uh it's a new mm-hmm. thing that came out with dominion lending a mobile app okay and it's kind of exciting when someone uh downloads it i get mm-hmm. a notification oh perfect and uh, what does it great. do what does the app do a- anything you want to do so it's a it has a calculator mm-hmm. figure out your figure out your payments that you want to make on a mortgage mm-hmm. how much you can inform afford for purchase mm. it talks about refinancing self-employed employee so it's it's Sorry. kind of it's kind of great that when i get a client and they actually use it they're at home yeah. and they're using it i know that they're using it so it's kind of can good you, can you send them a push notifications to, yes i could also send them a link by email mm. no no but i mean once they have the app can you send them like a message in the app uh i'm not quite sure it's mm. a brand might be new a, thing i know i get a, a cool notification thing. and then mm-hmm. um i can send an email yes the, i would take a look at that only because the idea of like so what they're called within an app they're called push notifications push notifications. and so okay. that'd be like a customized message so the same way you'd get an alert for instagram like this mm-hmm. person liked your photo mm-hmm. you might actually be able to send them out messaging okay in there and that might be a cool way like especially if there's a new something that's coming up on your end that mm. would be important for them to know or maybe mm. there's something customized and i think even having like you know hey thank you so much for doing business with me you could send some messaging mm. which works as well via email but i think where an alert on your phone is going to get like almost like a hundred percent response rate because you can't yeah. make that it doesn't go away till they open it whereas an email you can you don't have to open it you can kind of I get an but. email. I, I notice who downloaded it. I yeah, can yeah. see what they made. If they make some mm. sort of calculations, oh, okay. I kind of know what their a, what their target it's a is. Sneaky marketing. Tool. Yeah, <laughs> it's brand new. So yeah, I'm yeah. just um, playing with it so far. Yeah, so far. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and yeah, I think I think from the standpoint of like setting up Google Analytics, I, I can send you some some stuff offline about it. But essentially, all you do is you just uh, it's analytics.google.com sign up for a free account okay. get, and you just put the code in the website and re- as soon as you do that it automatically starts tracking whatever happens on your website okay so it's a great tool and then um, I'll make a note of a couple like those metrics to look at because I think um, I think if you especially if you're going to put paid dollars if you're gonna if you're gonna buy you know you've been a bid on a keyword on Google ads yeah. you're gonna be been paid traffic you're gonna pay a couple dollars for people to come to the site it'd be good to know hey, it seems like the people that are coming are you know, going to at least two pages and are spending at least 45 yeah. seconds. So I would say the metrics you want to think about are like, if, some, oops, if somebody's on the website for more than like 40 seconds, mm-hmm. that's a great indicator. And if yeah. the average amount of pages is, more, is like 1.75 or higher, that's a good indicator. Yeah. Um, what I'm looking for is maybe the search i know everybody has mortgages mortgage broker maybe self-employed a lot of people i, I think there's probably a ton of people that would search for that specifically specific. that's and what I, I was thinking and i think sentence. i think because especially in the early stages of a business where your marketing budget isn't like twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars a month and it's maybe you know on google it's maybe a couple hundred dollars um the more specific and the more niche especially mm-hmm. when you're serving that market yeah. the better yeah. so i would i would think about keywords that are like um, mortgages for self-employed people. Yeah. How do I get a mortgage if I'm self-employed? Like mm-hmm. those people are like, those are your sweet spot. Yeah. So Google ads, when you sign up, it's similar to analytics. You just sign up. It's a free program. It has um, what's called a, a keyword planner. Keyword planner. Okay. Yeah. So you go, you go into tools and keyword planner. So you can actually go in and it will give you the amount of searches that actually happen for all the keywords you're thinking about. And so you can see how strong the competition is for it, as well as some other ideas. So you go in and say, hmm, I'm thinking about mortgage broker in Streetsville, mortgages in Streetsville. You give it a bunch, even, you know, self-employed, how to get a mortgage when you're Mm self-employed. You type all those in and the keyword planner will give you the historical amount. So how many searches every month 
happen okay. on Google. And you can even narrow that geography to say like I'm only I only care if they're in Ontario or Canada wide or whatever you want. Like and so you can get real numbers on how many searches happen and it'll also tell you um how com jeez sorry it'll also tell you how competitive that keyword is so if a lot of people are fighting for that spot yeah. then it'll tell you your average click is going to be expensive and okay. if it's very niche so the ones that you'll i think that what you'll probably come across mm -hmm. are like it'll be stuff that only has like 20 to 100 searches every month but it yeah. won't be super competitive. So that's probably a great place yeah. for you to think about playing, especially like, again, when you're investing money that you've never invested in a Google product or a Facebook ad or whatever it is, mm. making sure that, you know, you start really slow, that you can test, that you understand what's happening with it. It might be the case where you hire that work out, but it's always good to have a decent fundamental understanding. Mm -hmm. It's the same, like, for me, even if I'm picking a vendor for, whatever it is like i'm going to outsource this task within our business i always like to know like the basics of it so make sure you know you're getting it from like a reputable pr provider or whatever okay. but you could i think you could and i mean we can sit down about it, about helping you kind of get something set up but i would for ads i would think about how to keep everything really really niche the other benefit to ads is it helps start bringing traffic to your website and what that helps with is your organic search, right? Because Google's saying, well, the, the sites that get a lot of traffic and that people are spending time on are the ones that we want to show up. And if nobody can find you, it's yeah. hard. So sometimes people will do paid and that will help feed the organic piece of it. So now I'm getting 100 people a month or 50 people a month or whatever that number is. Mm -hmm. So Google's saying, oh, people are looking for this. And they're coming to this website and they're spending a little bit of time and it helps move you up organically. Okay. There's no like clear path of like, it takes 10,000 clicks to the website to make you show up. It doesn't exist yeah. because um, every time you hit search, there's over a hundred different programs that Google runs to decide who's going to go up, even on the maps, even on the ads. So to try and like, people will try and like dissect, okay, if I do this strategy or this technique, this will make me go. Mm -hmm. But like if Google changes their mind on how they want to position stuff, then whatever you've done can kind of go out the window. But I would say that doing a little bit of Google paid in those spe like mm -hmm. really specific keywords will help even just raise your profile on those specific keywords, on the self-employed, on the, yeah. you know what I mean? So I think I think spending a little bit on Google ads makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But, I was even thinking like bruised credit, no income verification. like. And that could be stuff you put in the ad copy. Oh, in the ad copy. Yeah. Okay. I think you, so you don't, so with the keywords, you want to be, um, there's, there's two different types of, of searches. Okay. There's intent-based search. And then there's research search. So unless you're going to be a wealth of knowledge for information, mm -hmm. you don't want to, right now, especially if you're going to start with a lower budget, you don't okay. want to be bidding on stuff that people could be using to research. So uh, let's take like, um, let's take an interior designer, for example. Mm -hmm. um, design ideas or like ideas for designing my living room is not a keyword that an interior designer wants to bid on because that might be someone looking for a Pinterest board on like, give me some ideas. Okay. But like interior designer Mississauga is like, I'm looking for an interior designer in Mississauga. Okay. So keeping, the, keeping the searches so that like, you only want to bid on stuff that like, if I was actually looking for your service, that's what I would type. Okay. Because you can go down a path of like, oh, if people have bad credit, it'd be good if they know me, but people with bad credit could be looking for an auto loan. Yeah. And then you kind of, you're like, you're never, those are never going to be customers. Sure. Okay. So, good to know. Yeah. So intent based. So I always, I always break it down. So I usually use, um, thing in place, place, thing, thing, place, mortgage broker, streetsville, mortgage broker in streetsville, streetsville, mortgage broker. Okay. Those are like the three most common ones. And when you go into that keyword planner, if you type in a couple of things, it'll give you some suggestions. Oh, people also search for this and you can okay. say, Ooh, if they were looking for a mortgage, this does make sense. But making sure you focus on intent based searches, okay. those are those are gonna be the, the thing that'll bring you a return. All right. Cool. Um does that answer I mean that's kind yeah. of a lot to take yeah. in, but for me it's more like how do I get 
out there? What sites do I mm-hmm. go on to do the, what you were saying, to, to actually go and register and be mm-hmm. on, on uh, Google search? Because yeah, like, yeah. So like, I would say anywhere where you can create a free profile yeah. will help link back to you. Okay. So I would go on. There's so many and like which ones yeah. actually work? Yeah. Where, which one am I supposed to use, right? That's I want to ch- pick two, three good ones. Yeah. What I would use, there's a, a program called WiseKick okay. that we use. And so it, uh, it puts you on 10 of the most popular directories. But it does it all. It does it all for you. Okay. So Wise Kick, um, and so what it does is it it'll put you on like the yellow pages on this business directory, that business directory. But you just go into Wise Kick. You fill out all of your information. You put your logo. You put your hours. You put your, you know, your whatever else, whatever okay. other info, and then it uploads them to all the sites for you. Okay. And then if you change the information on Wise Kick, it updates your profiles everywhere else. Oh, so it's actually cool. a really easy way to. Put yourself out. We've also used, um, there's somebody, have you ever heard of Fiverr? No. It's like, um, it's like a, a marketplace for people that are giving you services for $5. Okay. So there's a lot of weird stuff. So like, I will draw a picture of your dog with a crayon for five bucks or like, I'll write this or I'll record something for you. And so you go in and there's like, there's like stuff for marketing, there's stuff for art, there's stuff for, it's like a weird place of, Mm -hmm. you know, there's people that will write blog posts for you for five bucks and you can, they add stuff on. So if you want to get it faster, you pay an extra $4. And if you want to get a longer blog, then it costs you an extra $5. So they bundle stuff together. But one thing we've used on Fiverr specifically is there's a guy who will go manually register your business information on a hundred directory sites. Oh, that's cool. And it was like 13 bucks. And then at the end, he sends you an email with the login for each one. He manually goes in and does all of them. Okay. So we've done that for a bunch of people. And yeah. it like it was like 13 bucks. I'm like, how? You're not even making money at this point. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of people overseas, like mm-hmm. India and China, where it's like, I guess, because of the labor's inexpensive there. Yeah. To them, it's like 15 bucks is great. Um, and so Fiverr is a great that's good to know. tool for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we use Fiverr for a lot of stuff. <laughs> Nothing for like like branding or like creative like i wouldn't get graphics made on there okay. but just for like little weird tasks to outsource that take mm-hmm. time that take time yeah. and if you don't have an assistant yeah right to, um the other website that we use is sometimes is upwork upwork it's okay. similar to fiverr but like you would say i need this thing done so you would say, I created this blog post and I would mm-hmm. like it listed on a bunch of websites or I'd like it sent out, whatever. So you can go on Upwork and post. It's like a job posting, okay. but it's all like freelance and it's like they tell you how much their hourly whatever is. So again, little things like this where if you're like, hmm, it would be cool if we signed up for this on a bunch of different websites or whatever. Upwork or Fiverr are great places to go where you can pay like, under 50 bucks and just have somebody manually do the whole thing and then you don't have to deal with it because that's stuff it's like it would take you hours probably and you don't have that much time to do it (laughs) i have to fill in mortgage applications yeah so that and so those are great um they're it's it's what's called like a, a gig gig site and it's like i we there's some stuff where like we we had somebody that was working full time like just doing administrative assistant stuff for us and like Sometimes even with that person, it was still made more sense to pay someone $4 an hour. Like sometimes we just wanted a list of all the businesses in this area. And we would say, hey, we need 200, we need a list of 200 businesses in this neighborhood or whatever it was. And we would just outsource it to them and it would forty dollars and would, they would give us this big spreadsheet back. And so there's a lot of like little things that you can outsource on Upwork and on okay. Fiverr. It's just it takes a little bit of getting used to the first couple, like you put the, you put the task up and like 200 people apply and you're like, no, there's too many things. <laughs> but like what we've done is we found a couple that we like working with and I can, I'm happy to share those contacts cause they, we use them over and over and over again. And okay. it's like six seventy five an hour. And it's like, if you have like little administrative things, it's a great mm-hmm. just outsourced tool. Okay. We use Good all to the know. time. Yeah. Um, so let's switch gears a little bit to content. Yes. Yes. Um, so one thing I know we talked about offline was just about you need to get out there. Yes. 
Yeah, you need your face out there. You need the yeah. brand out there. You need all the pieces. So you've got an office here. So let's talk about what we have access to, right? So we okay. got a new office in Streetsville. Yes. Cool location. Got the front of the building coming. Yeah, it's a little cute small boutique. Yep. Style. Yeah, and you've got the you've got the front of the building. You're gonna brand. Yeah, we got the TV, so we could do actually do advertisements on the TV. So oh, like the TV are, out of the window? Yeah, yeah so yeah. when people stop hmm. by for a walk, there's a lot of people coming for walks here and down uh, for ice cream, especially in the summertime. On Fridays, we have like salsa night here in the square. Nice. So there's a lot of traffic. Yeah. So we got the TV, so we, we, we want to put more ads on the TV. Yeah, for sure. And are you thinking about, um, from the ads perspective, obviously, you know, Here's the pro- here's our service. Here's yeah. what we offer. Is something that would go up there. Yeah. Um, one thing I would think about, and it kind of ties into my opinion about content as a whole, is be cognizant of how much is selling versus how much is building awareness or building a community or mm-hmm. building a following. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, especially if you know you're posting on LinkedIn, or you're posting on Instagram, which we'll talk about. But one key thing is like. It's same thing with our service, right? Like we have a training program and we do marketing for people. People aren't always in the market. Maybe they have a company that they've already, they're already using and maybe we're not the right fit right now. So if every post I did was, hey, do you, want, do you need this training? Hey, do you need this marketing thing? Hey, do you need this from me? Then people have no reason to follow you because all you're doing is just saying, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. So I like to keep the amount of buy this content to like less than 20%. So if you, and maybe, maybe 20% is the number. Um, and so that, that 20% is the, to me, what we've seen across, you know, a lot of different businesses that we've worked with is the right amount of like, you're going to put out different stuff. And we'll talk about that 80% because I think that's the biggest thing to focus on. But so of that 20%, those are going to be those, like, I've already been in communications. I already follow you. And then you say something at the right time being like, do you need this now? And you're like, yeah, I do need this now. Mm -hmm. That'll help. There will be people that will come across you for the first time who are looking for the service right away. And so you don't want to, you know, you don't want it to be 1% where every, one every 100 posts is buy something because then they're like, oh, I, I didn't, I, I wouldn't have known that you did that because you didn't offer it to me. So I'd say about 20% of the stuff you put out should be, hey, we offer this thing. Here's what makes us different. Come buy it. But only 20%. 20%. And I would think about it the same for content as you would for the front of the board, right? Like I think you know, hey, we offer this thing and having that on the board is great, but maybe that's a section of it. Maybe the other section of it is like, I don't know, what's valuable to the people? What's valuable to people walking by? Hope you enjoy your salsa tonight. Shake mm-hmm. a leg for me. You know what I mean? Like building oh, building community, building awareness around just just interacting as a human. That's yeah. the biggest piece. Then a lot of, but a lot of and it's more so true in kind of corporate settings, like bigger companies, they don't know how to bleed the like, we're actually humans to like, here's the product. And every time you see a product, it's, they're trying to tie it into like, here's some content that's either valuable or entertaining. So I, I think about content in, in three buckets. There's informational providing value. And that should be say 40%. Then there's entertainment and that doesn't have to be you don't have to be making something funny but that could be like building a real relationship as a human Mm -hmm. that should be 40 and then the selling should be 20 okay and so to break down those two 40s informational is you know there's going to be people that have questions about your industry about your products about things that are related even to your industry and you being that source of information to them can be a great help so, um, you know, maybe there's an article. Here's an example of one of those pieces of content from that bucket. Maybe it's a video or an article saying, hey, do you, like, do you own your own business? And here's, here's some myths about trying to get a mortgage when you own your own business. Yeah. You know, there could be some stuff about, hey, here's some of the things to look out for. You know, it could be, could be some stuff like here's, um, you know, when you're filling out a certain form here's a couple like ways that can help you. And I don't know if there's any ways, but, but I think there's a big pool of information of like, what would your potential customer, what do they need to know and how can you deliver it to them? So it's not somebody else. I think one thing that happens in that bucket is they say, well, I'm giving you this blog on 
the things you need to look out for if you're a self-employed person looking for a mortgage. By the way, come get a mortgage from me. No, no, no. No. That's that's your selling bucket, and you keep okay. you got to keep them separate. We we were meeting with a, a friend of ours who owns a gym. They're growing like crazy. It's a, a fitness and then uh, a boxing gym. They own two gyms. And he said, well, if we're putting out this how to exercise content, their informational bucket, Mm -hmm. well, can't we just say, by the way, come do a class with us? I'm like, no, because what that does, if you're providing something with someone that's valuable to them, Mm -hmm. if the answer to that thing is you being the sale, it's kind of like saying, I like your hair, but, you know what I mean? Everything before the but. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, now I don't believe anything you said. If you're saying, here's information that will help you finding a mortgage, whatever those whatever those pieces of information are, it has to be standalone. It has to just be, they should be able to take that and be like, damn, that was so nice that you made that. This helped me. This is yeah. great. Because the people, because what will happen with that content is 20% of the people won't do anything with it because they just read it and they're like, I didn't need that. Then you'll get a, a bucket of people that will read it and say, oh, shit, that's all I needed to know. Thanks. Bye. And they're not going to become your customer anyway. But you yeah. will get people that read it and now have a trust in you because you were that source of information. And then when you try and use the sales content later, or maybe they just come to you on their own. But maybe they're like, man, I didn't know this. And you provided that information for them. Then when you come to your sales bucket later, they already have a trust and then you're asking them for something, but they have a trust in you because you provided them something with no mm-hmm. strings attached. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So your informational bucket is there. Um, and we can kind of go into like what you can actually do there, but then your bucket of, of um, entertainment is, is another big piece. And that's building brand. That's building awareness around you guys as a company. So what I fit into that bucket is like, Stuff that's like what's going on in the office, day in the life, right? Yeah. Little video clips. You could do, you know, little profiles of the employees. If you're thinking about your business as a local business, here's, you know, hey, we checked out Pizziolo, who's actually a client of ours, so I say, okay. but they just opened over here, right? That yeah. this is their 39th location. So even going into there and having, you know, a little Instagram video or something being like, hey guys, we're at Pizziolo, we're checking checking out their new da 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 can't wait to grab a slice. Then when you're putting that up, you're tagging them, being like, hey, check out what these guys are doing. It's really cool. Maybe there's a scuba diving store being like, you, you go in and you take a picture of yourself in there and you're tagging them. So it's like building equity around you. And it's content that you're putting out that you're thinking, wait, why is me in a scuba diving shop relevant to my business? It's not, but it's relevant to you people connecting with you as a human and it's making other business owners be like, that's so nice that they, she came in here and she, you know, her brand is sharing story about us or talking about us in a way. And it just makes people friendlier to you. Mm -hmm. And the way that that residually works is then their cousin, then their daughter who's looking for a place. Oh, you gotta, you need a mortgage, right? Just go down the street that she's such a great human. You know what I mean? So the, the, the entertainment bucket doesn't have to be produced content, but it could be, you know, uh, congratulating a customer that just got a home. That could be stuff that's going around here, events that are going on outside, right? It could be anything, anything that's that's got a human touch, mm-hmm. but making sure that you you and your employees are at the forefront of it. So it, you know, just having a picture of this event, this event, this event, this event is okay. But having like a selfie and you can have your employees taking yeah. pictures here and there. Hey, if, if someone's going to be going to this Christmas event, can you take a couple of snapshots? Cause we're going to do some posts about it. Um, and then I think connecting with the locals, right? Connecting with, even if you do, it's funny. You don't even have to go in and buy anything. Yeah. You can just say, hey, I just opened up down the... The same way you would network now. Hey, just opened up down the street. I just wanted to introduce myself and say, hi, if there's anything I can ever do for you guys, let us know. Oh, by the way, do you mind if I grab a snapshot? And then you could say, hey, we walked in and checked out this company today. Tag them so they can see that you've, you're you showing okay. them some love. Um, and that, I think, will build... Th- that gives people a reason to follow you even if they don't need the mortgage right now. If you think about the brands that you follow on social media or on mm-hmm. LinkedIn, like I, there's very few. There's very few. 
how many how many brands do you follow, right? Unless it's like I like their line of products or they have a personality that makes me want to see what's going on. A lot of this industry, 99% of it, which is where I think you can really set yourself apart because you've got a good personality and you seem like a nice person, is like you could have the you're the brand, you're the personality. Yeah. This all the other stuff is just secondary. People will follow you because, hey, what's going on day in the life, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, those quirky guys are playing Yahtzee again in the office. It sounds arbitrary, but people like watching what other people are doing. So the more you can unveil, let people in through that curtain, the, the better chance you're going to have of drawing in a bigger audience of people. And then those audience, even though you're saying, well, but they're not looking for a mortgage right now. But maybe their sister is, maybe their cousin, yeah. maybe may, when they're ready, if you have them and you've won them over mm-hmm. when they need it, then they come to you or when their friends need it, you've built the brand. And it's good that they know what I actually do because people <laughs> don't know what I do. <laughs> that's a factor. Yeah, yeah. You can even have a session that's like, yo, family, do yeah. you know, this is what it's actually about. Or, hey, yeah. Susan, this yeah. is what I'm actually doing with my day. And and yeah. people buy in. People like people. And again, mm-hmm. if you if you think about the brands and the personalities and the things that you follow on Instagram, it's yeah. often, if it is a brand, this, you know, this cup company, if all they did was post pictures of their cups in different kitchens, I'd be like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, how boring is that? Yeah. But you know what I mean? But if they had like, you know, they emailed their customers that have bought it and be like, hey, tell us like what your favorite drink that goes into the, goes into your cups are. And then it's like, hey, Fred from Alabama likes this type of drink in his cup, then they're like, oh, seeing, connecting with the customers, it's giving them a shout out. So the more of that you can do, even though it's counterintuitive because you're thinking it's not to do with mortgages, it's not driving me business right now, it will help you build the profile of people that follow you. And then it's a long-term play, but it's building real brand. Yeah. Because the thing is like mortgages overall, it's a bit of a commodity. Yeah, it's, very it's the biggest payment you're making every single month Mm -hmm. and you're giving information to a person everything about you all your financial information so it's like they have to trust you Mm -hmm. so making yeah putting you and your people your employees out front of it as much as possible is the biggest biggest thing so so informational and that can be anything from you know you could shoot like little short videos. You could write blog posts for the website. They can be short. They can be simple things. Mm-hmm. You could make like, I know with real estate, like um, you could produce a, like a first time home buyers checklist. Yeah. You know, if you're searching for this or for that. So like whatever resources that you would have in the industry anyway, I would say you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just put your personal spin on them. And give people a little bit of, you know what I mean? Make it make it your version of that document. And so informational entertainment, which is that the 40%, which is, again, as much human interaction as possible. Um, connecting with local businesses, profiling your customers, profiling your employees. What Hey, here's, you want to see what a day in the life looks like? You get on Instagram, going from this meeting to this meeting to this meeting yeah. like people want to follow that if i yeah. could afford it i would have someone follow me around with a camera and shoot me behind the scenes of me doing <laughs> this and going from meeting to yeah. meeting because people would just be attracted to like i wonder what it's like to be in this industry and you actually what will happen with that is when people when other agents see that you're looking for the top of the top to bring onto you like that will also help people be like look at like the awareness she's bringing look at like it feels like it's a cool place to work. It's an interesting, there's interesting stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll help you recruit as well as get clients yeah. from my experience. And mm. we're the type of office that we're not closing a five. Right. <laughs> Last night I was here till nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grinding. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that, so do you have any kind of questions about anything kind of to split into from those buckets of information? So basically mm-hmm. it was the Google um, Instagram. Mm-hmm. How do we get people to follow me? Yeah. So I think the two biggest platforms for you, I think are, so LinkedIn, I think is really, 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 so really LinkedIn. powerful. See, I don't even concentrate on LinkedIn. Yeah. Right. So LinkedIn. Cause mm-hmm. I don't get any clients from LinkedIn. Yeah. Or... Do you put out, when was the last time you put out a post on LinkedIn? No, I haven't. There you go. That's I why you don't. Like LinkedIn. <laughs> so, yeah. so 
I mean, LinkedIn is obviously more of a business environment. Mm -hmm. So your your uh, entertainment content is not really the content for that. Okay. The entertainment content is more Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Your informational content with your personal spin on it is more LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Um, and so... Because right now on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I because I changed my name, mm -hmm. mortgage broker and yeah. owner, I'm getting just other mortgage agents, sure. mortgage brokers, mm -hmm. or just the mortgage industry. Yeah. Every time um, I do anything on LinkedIn, I get 10 people being like, hey, do yeah. you need employees? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's going to happen. Yeah. But what I would say is, like, there's a lot of guys like me who are self-employed on LinkedIn. Yeah. And if you were publishing even just a piece of content every month, that was like, and it could be, so what I would say is the the intimidating thing about producing content is like, I make this piece and then I got to make the next, then I got to make the next. There's always a way to do more with one. So what I would do is if you were to write, you know, the myths about getting a mortgage as a, as a self-employed person, and maybe you've, uh, there's five different pieces of articles about that, right? So article goes on your blog, on your website, and then the article, you then put it up on LinkedIn as well. So you're like, hey, you, you know, do you know anybody that's self-employed? Like, I've, I wrote this great piece about this. Go check it out on the website. So you link it back yeah. onto the website. But that becomes a LinkedIn post. Mm -hmm. It goes out to your entire... The nice thing about LinkedIn right now is it goes out to your entire network. If somebody likes it or comments, it then shows up to their entire following. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever seen on LinkedIn recommended for you. So See, I, I, you don't spend a lot of time. No. So what happens is if I, if Jess writes an article and then I like it and we're connected mm -hmm. and you're not connected with her, you would see on your feed article recommended for you because Mike likes it. Okay. So it's her piece of content that you see because I've liked it. Yeah. So the ability for that to reverberate, if you can get a couple, you know, people liking it is insane. And I think it goes, again, you might catch people... The thing with all content, unlike a Google ad where it's like, I'm looking for this thing right now. That's more like, I'm going to close that deal right now. Yeah. All this other stuff is like, some people say, well, I don't see, if I put this one post up, is that going to mean I have a client? No. It might not mean anything ever. But it's going to give you a great chance and it's going to be able to build a personality around the brand. So when you put out that one article, um, you know, it might fall flat. Maybe nobody cares, but it could be that tenth one that Susan sees and she's like, "Oh, this is really good. My friend Mike has a business that he owns and he can't get a mortgage. I'm gonna share it to him. He gets it and he's like, "Holy crap, this is great. He calls you. Like it's all it's out there and and just the more you can put out there, the more at bats you get to to drive somebody in. So with LinkedIn, I would I would do like if you're creating stuff on your website, share those articles out there. And concentrate more a little bit on LinkedIn because I haven't at all. Yeah, 100%. Because the other thing you can do is like there might be groups on LinkedIn that are, you know, self-employed groups, right? Yeah. There's there's different like like a Facebook group. They have them on LinkedIn. So like I, um, I joined one the other day. I was getting rid of boxing tickets and I joined this like LinkedIn boxing group because I was like, hey, does anybody want these tickets? And they were gone. But you found like, you know self-employed style groups mm -hmm. and you go into that group so here's what a lot of agents will do they'll go into that group and they'll be like hey guys uh i do mortgages for people that are self-employed come get something from me and they're like who the fuck is this person spamming our network of people like you know what i mean if there's ten thousand people in this group mm -hmm. if you just post something about what you do in there like hey i'm selling this thing you're gonna be like who is this person why are they just because if you think about like the spam or like cold email that you get and you're like this is not I don't, I don't need this. Go away. But if you go in there and say, hey, group, I wrote this piece that's really helpful to you. It doesn't equal you having to buy something from me. You know what I mean? It's just here's valuable stuff. It's going to be way more better. It's going to be better received than if you say, hey, guys, I, I offer this service. Come buy something from me. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so I think it's like you create one piece and it, it's something that goes on your blog. You share it on LinkedIn. You share it into LinkedIn groups, maybe even Facebook groups, right? People that are self-employed in Facebook groups. You go in, you say, hey, administrator of the group, I'd love to share this article. I'm not selling anything. It's just a great piece. If you'd have it, I'd yeah. love to put it in there. And then those 10,000 people see it and 
that could easily be become business, right? And if not, it's somebody that came on the website, maybe they followed you on Instagram, and maybe a year from now they do business with you. So it's just it's just putting out consistency is the biggest piece. So if you're gonna do LinkedIn, maybe you say, you know what, as a starting point, I'm gonna write, or someone in the office is gonna write one piece of content every month, it'll go on the blog, and then we'll post it on LinkedIn yeah. once a month, that's it. See what happens, see, because when you put the analytics on your website, if somebody comes to you from LinkedIn, you're going to see that. Okay. And you're going to say, oh, shit. I'm getting, I'm getting five or six people every time I do a post. And then you might say, well, maybe if we start doing more posts, maybe that brings in more people. And you see. So um, when, you, when you're in analytics, it's going to say people that came directly to the website. So they typed in the URL directly. Then there's going to be people that found you on Google organically. And then it's going to say people that came to you from social media. So you'll be able to see how many people came to your website from Instagram, from LinkedIn, from Facebook. And then from there, you can break down those metrics we talked about earlier. How long are they staying on the site? How many pages did they go to? And if you're saying, you know what? LinkedIn is driving 20 people a month and they're all staying a minute and a half and going on to four pages. You're like, we're on to something here. We should be putting up more on LinkedIn. So you can measure the effectiveness of all this via your Google analytics because okay. it, it's going to tell you. And you're going to show me. Okay. Yeah. So I think LinkedIn is a good spot for your informational bucket. And you can talk to people right on there. Like, Hey, do you know any small business? Do you know any, you know, independent business owners? This is a really great, great piece of content for them. Again, you can do, a little bit of selling, hey, send people my way if, if they're looking for it, but a bigger pool of information should be just helpful, practical stuff. Okay. And then, oh, by the way, I'm selling, but never together. Never, here's the helpful stuff, oh, buy something. It's like, here's the helpful stuff, oh, now buy something. Independent content. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand. And then from the Instagram side, I think that's more, it's a visual platform, but I think you get followers around like, I think it's just day in the life stuff, like yeah. pictures of the team, pictures of like local stuff. And just um, getting into the habit of doing it. Getting into the habit. Okay. One thing that in our training that we find is okay. the process of if it's not the perfect thing, it's hard to put out. Analysis paralysis. I I I've been doing it for a long time, and it helps a lot of. Con I still it still happens to me sometimes where I'm like I'm sitting there. I have a video recording for like. 25 minutes and I was sitting in front of the computer screen. It was just something I hadn't done yet. And I was just like, and it took me 25 minutes to be like, okay, I think, I think I'm going to hit record now. And that was recording, but the other part wasn't recording. And I was like, watch it after I'm like, just fucking hit it. Go. Yeah. And then, you know, if you really hate it, then kill it. And that's yeah. fine. You're good. There's going to be some stuff like that. But I think, um, with Instagram, it's, it's volume and it's consistency. So I think having one post every day is important. Okay. And whether that's you may take the picture or you might find some stock photography, some local stuff or share someone else's, but mm -hmm. having a post that goes out every day is great. And it could be as simple as like, I don't know, you follow a couple people that you know did do photography around here or that are artists here. Hey, we're sharing, you know, post their thing. Hey, we're shouting out this company, like look how cool this piece is, we yeah. loved it. Or you take, go around and take a bunch of pictures. One thing that we find practical is if you have a photographer or a videographer come in for the day and just go and just do shit. Like go, like when it gets warm, go sit in front of different businesses. Go have pictures of you walking mm. around. Go have you interacting with other business owners and just shoot a ton of stuff for one day. And mm. then you have it for the next four months. And the thing is, I've been here for so long. Like we went to a restaurant here mm. yesterday. We went mm. over there. We're having our... Uh, staff birthday yeah. all their birthdays combined in yeah. three months because we've just been so busy everyone's right. taking time off and mm. just next week we're all having a birthday yeah all of like three of us had birthdays so we're right. actually going to do a birthday and we're supporting the local yeah. uh, community here yeah. too so, so even I'll, if you grab a couple of pictures from yeah. there you know a couple of pictures up front um and it's, sometimes it's hard to like is it it's always not always practical to grab the selfie mm -hmm. so you know i i recommend grabbing like sounds funny but we've been doing it grabbing like a little camera tripod like mm -hmm. for your phone yeah so you yeah. can like set a quick timer set it up 
whatever. It's weird to do the first 10 times, yeah. but when you see the better better pictures with better angles and you're like, oh, it's better than just this where you see your arm in it, like yeah. in a selfie, you're like, oh man, this is great. Okay. But then some people say, I just find it very hard to do that habit. Yeah. So what you might do is once every two months, either get a student or get a, an inexpensive photographer and just have them come in for a day and you know, set up people in here and set up different configurations. Just take what we've also done is like if, you know, you having a meeting with employee X, Mm -hmm. right? And then you take a couple of different angles and then you both change shirts. Like now I'm wearing the white shirt. Now you're wearing a blue shirt. And you, you you know, move the books around, move your laptop and then Mm -hmm. take a couple more and just store those for another day. Okay. Because it doesn't matter when it's taken, but Mm -hmm. like find ways to maximize if you're going to do a day of content shooting i always recommend that you can probably get two or three months worth of posts and then when you're out and about and you're taking them you get those extra ones Mm -hmm. but i think having some like you know not stock for like branded stock photography you know like have people come in take some shots it's always happening something's always like we had the manager Mm -hmm. from rbc come on uh, thursday we it was like a fat tuesday with donuts yeah like European style, yeah. uh, once a year. It's, it's called Fat Tuesday. Right. So I was at the bank. I invited the manager. He came, and it was just opportunity. We could have taken a picture. It could have, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think of it's, those things after mm, yeah. or before. I wasn't thinking of it. So one thing, like, just from the mental mm-hmm. thing is, like, like how if do I you, change? If you set – so this you, you create it as a – so content creation is just, like, the same thing as painting – It's just the same thing as new computer. It's the same thing as like, I should really clean that over there that I don't want to do. Like if it's not a business goal, Mm -hmm. then it's not anything. Like there's so many, there's so many nice to haves. Everyone's got a million, every business owner. I've got, I have a list. I have two full notepads full of just like, I want to do this. And I want to sit on a street corner and answer Google questions one day and film it. Like so many millions (laughs) of different things. But the bottom line is unless the same way you say I have to file my taxes or I have to pay my employees or I have to file this paperwork. If your business objective is I have to post one thing on Instagram that day. So I have you, to post it. I have to put it in my calendar. You have to. Yeah. And even if you just say I'm just going to start with three a week. Yeah. Like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I will put one post up. Those Because those first ones, like you're going to agonize over for the whole day yeah. until you get in a habit. But you, if you make it like a the same way you would say I have to file this paperwork because it's a business objective and my business needs this to run, Mm -hmm. you'll never start doing it. But if you can, if you put it in your calendar and it's like, this is the thing, the first couple are a real big pain in the ass. But once you get in that habit, you'll start discovering like, um, you'll start discovering like, Oh guys, wait, don't leave yet. And then you're going to videotape everybody leaving the office on a Friday in slow-mo because you're like, this will be a funny post for my Friday, you know, at, you know, getting out of the office like, and it's everyone yeah. like running in slow-mo. You'll start when you, when you're forced into doing three posts in a week, um, you will naturally start seeing content opportunities everywhere. But those, but, but challenge yourself for the first two months to do w- one post three times a week on set days. So that's a total of three, six, nine, twelve, twenty-four posts in two months, which isn't okay. too bad. Three posts a week, <laughs> um, and then and then okay, so then reverse engineer that. Okay, well I don't want every post to just be a selfie, which means that I need a couple like this, but we also might need a couple of the employees sitting around, or we need some stuff of like other businesses because we're gonna say, hey, congrats, yeah. Pizziolo, for opening. So maybe it's you know you or a couple of your team standing there, and you take a picture of them outside. Welcome to the neighborhood. Congratulations. That's a post. That's fine. Yeah. And you can plan that ahead. You can take that photo on Monday and you can post it on Friday. You don't, you know what I mean? You can bank that stuff. But I think setting the goal as a business goal, if you do three a week for the first two months, you'll probably start doing more sooner than the two months are up because okay. you'll just start getting in the habit yeah. of it. But it's, yeah, I mean, it's intimidating to be like, I'm going to put pictures on the internet. Great. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think for me is actually putting in my calendar, actually... Yeah doing it yeah because even right now i'm thinking i have this client i need to order an appraisal like this i'm so back office underwriting documents Mm -hmm. i'm not thinking of these things and the thing is like if i don't a lot of people won't know what i do for sure and i mean you know a lot of people and i've i've had people that 
we've come in to pitch on training or on marketing who are like, oh, I don't believe in this. I'm like, okay, bye. Like, I'm out. Like, if you don't believe in it, I'm not here to convince people. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that, like, you know, we put up pictures on Instagram about because a couple of us are climbers, right? And we had a climbing business that hired us. It's like, oh, we saw your content. We, you know, saw that you do this. We saw that you were also climbers. So we wanted to connect, like, from Instagram. We've, yeah. we've actually probably brought on three or four pieces of business just from sharing informational stuff on Instagram, like, you know, cool ways to use filters on your iPhone when you're taking pictures. Oh, I saw this and then I saw what you did and then I hired you. That happens all the time. So if you believe in that as a way to build your brand and a way to get customers over time, Mm -hmm. then it is an actual business objective that you can be like, it's in my calendar. I have a strong feeling about it. And I I get the sense from you that you you already get it. And I just like, just need to like, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, with the Google search, I don't know how to get started. That's my problem. It's getting started. That yeah, that's that's a lot more technical, and yeah. that'll be more than kind of what we can cover right the second. That that's more. That's a bit of a challenge because like Google AdWords, you can just log in and it mm. just says, "Oh, put your credit card in, pick a keyword." Mm. Like it's a disaster. If you don't change some of the settings to make sure it's mm-hmm. done right, it'll just waste your money so fast. Google's a really bad platform yeah. for that. Um, so yeah, we'll talk, we'll take that kind of offline, but I think from the content perspective, I know, I know that you're kind of like excited to kind of like start moving towards it. And I just I, need you to guide me step yeah, by yeah. step. Tell me yeah. what to do every but I, week. Yeah. Cause you know, but I think, I think kind of what, if you, I think from the strategy, I think yeah. that's a great formula for mm-hmm. you. Um, and then it's just a matter of like, okay, great. Now, what does that mean? But if you, what I would recommend is as we go back and, and listen to kind of what we talked about, going on to some of the other businesses that you either follow already or mm-hmm. people that are competitors to you and see what they're doing and be like, oh, all, you know, eight of every 10 posts is like, it has text on it saying, hey, come buy our service. Mm-hmm. You're like, I would never buy from them because all they're doing is selling, selling, selling. So you'll start to see those things now that we've kind of started mm-hmm. talking about it of like, oh, I see this is a great example of what an informational piece of content is. And maybe it's a quick video being like, Hey, mortgage rates are going down. Come whatever. Mm -hmm. There's different ways to tell the story, but I think when you compartmentalize the types of content and then you see what other people are doing, it makes it easy to be like, Oh, I could see how I could spin this in my voice. Cause the thing about content is you don't have, not everything has to be super unique, super original. There's no such thing. It's like use what else has existed and what's worked Put your voice on it. Put your spin on it, and and you'll do fine with it. Cool. So, cool. All right. All Thank right. you. Thanks. Thank you so much.